In a world filled with endless choices, we embarked on a quest to find the ultimate carry-on suitcase, the one that will accompany you on your adventure, the one that will stand the test of time. Ah,、uh, nope. But stay tuned to find out which one of these other seven suitcases range from $120 to almost $1,000 will be the winner, because there can only be one. That was my attempt at humor. Let's get into what I'm actually good at: super detailed reviews. Before I jump into the showdown, I want to establish the rules. These are the suitcases that I'm personally considering buying after extensive amount of research. So the two popular brands that I decide to filter out are Away and Calpac. All the suitcases must have the following features. It's got to be hard shell that's made from polycarbonate. It has four 360 degree spinner wheels that are double wheeled instead of single wheeled. It has two handles, one on top and one on the side. It's gotta have a TSA lock, and it's gonna look kind of cute. Because my channel is very small, I don't get any sponsorships, so I bought everything and will have to return most of the suitcases except for one. So there won't be any durability tests. With that said, my review will probably be one of the most detailed reviews when it comes to components, construction quality, and usability. This is gonna be a pretty long video, so I will highly recommend going to the timestamp and. And skip around as you see fit. Okay, let's get started. So this is the Samsonite Winfield 2 hard side luggage with spinner wheel carry-on 20 inch. Mouthful, I know. This is my current carry-on suitcase. I purchased this from Amazon June of 2017, so I had it for a little over six years. I paid $64 at the time. I know it's crazy, but you can still buy it for $110 on Amazon if you like this orange color. I never had any issues with the size of the suitcase for domestic or international travels. I most I also use this as a carry-on, but I definitely have checked the suitcase before. I don't love how you can see the white under material coming through the scratches, but overall it held up pretty well. The thing that I really hate about the suitcase are the wheels. The original wheels are really terrible. You can see my husband Samsonite still has them. I practically have to drag the suitcase across the airport. I was able to make a small amount of improvement by replacing the original wheels. It still doesn't roll as smoothly, but Is way better than the original. So here's how it spins without anything in it. The telescoping handle feels actually pretty smooth going up and down. It does flex a little bit, but I don't mind. So I recently took the suitcase with me to Miami, and the airport had pretty thick carpeting. I really struggled to roll the suitcase. So I'm going to pack the suitcase with all the stuff that I would normally bring on a week or shorter trip. So I packed my hairbrush case, my clothes in a packing cube, a pair of bulky shoes just for demonstration purpose, a pair of Slippers, a jacket that I don't want to get wrinkled, my compression packing cubes for clothes that I don't care about getting wrinkled, my toiletries, makeup case, my jewelry box, and a extra T-shirt. So on the bottom of the suitcase, I like to kind of line it with something like a pair of jeans, pants, and sweatshirt to fit in between the telescoping handlebars. With the suitcase fully stuffed, I took it for a spin. And my thought process was that if it rolls smoothly on my thick rug, it should be able to handle most of the airport rugs and streets. And like what I said before, these wheels are just incredibly bad. You can see how much I'm struggling to roll it. I ended up having to drag it across the rug. So when I picked it up, it feels pretty balanced. It doesn't have the side handles, so it's a little hard to kind of pick it up. But overall, for a under seventy dollars suitcase that I use. For six years, it's been pretty solid. But I'm just ready for something better. The suitcase that I wanted to keep definitely needs to feel like an upgrade. So let's take a look at from the least expensive to most expensive suitcase that's on my list. Let's first start with Quince. So this one is the carry-on hard shell suitcase, 20 inch, coming in at $110 without tax. Quince is the least expensive suitcase on this list. Although I have never seen Quince do any sales, if you use the link that I shared, you can get a $20 discount. So definitely check it out if you are interested in buying a Quince suitcase. So if you're not familiar with Quince, it is a direct-to-consumer or short D2C company with focus on affordable, high-quality items. I have purchased couple things from Quince, and I had a pretty good experience with their clothing items. So I figured that I'm gonna give their suitcase a try. The first impression out of the box is that it. Rolls much nicer than Samsonite, 
but the telescopic handle didn't feel as smooth going up and down, and it did flex side to side a bit. So the suitcase is made in China. The website says the width is 14.4, height is 22, and depth is 9.1. But if you compare to the measurements that I took, the width is 14.3, the height is 22.3, and then the depth is 9.5. And also the weight, the website says 6.2 pounds. When I weighed it, it was about 6.46 pounds. So the description online is pretty accurate in comparison to the measurements that I've taken. When I was researching quince, the reason I was really interested in them is because the components that they use on the website they says they use the Hinomoto wheels. So these are Japanese wheels that supposed to be high quality. So the wheels diameter measures to be 1.9 inches. The width of the wheel is three eighths of an inch, and when you combine the two together, total is about 1.5, and had a ground clearance of two inches. The TSA lock is on the top part of the suitcase. I'm actually not too crazy about that. It is much easier when the lock is in the middle versus when the lock is at top. One of the zipper has to travel much further around the suitcase than the other one, and especially if you're short like me, my hands are not that long, so I have to really stretch out or walk around the suitcase in order to open it. Something that I don't like about the suitcase is that it has exposed stitching, and the enforcement panel at the spine of the suitcase is also exposed. I feel like if something gets caught, the seam can potentially rip. So I'm a little bit concerned about the longevity, especially if you check the suitcase. And then one other thing that makes me concerned about the longevity is when the suitcase is empty and zipped, the top and the bottom half they don't really sit flush against each other. There's quite a bit of movement, and it just doesn't feel sturdy. So let's take a look at the suitcase inside. Let's start with the zippers again. The exterior and interior zippers are all YKK, and it zips really smoothly. When you open the inside, Quinn suitcase has two compression straps that attach to a compression panel, which is kind of cool for the price point. The straps are sewn to the suitcase, and then the other side of the suitcase is a fully zippable panel that's made from mesh. I don't particularly like the mesh because it's easy to tear, but this mesh does feel pretty durable, so maybe it's fine. It comes with a laundry bag. In a scuff polish block, and the suitcase also came with a dust bag. So one of the things that I do is to open up the lining and to see the body of the suitcase, so I can get a sense of how it's built. Because there is no logo in the front, it's pretty smooth, and also the wheelbase is kind of shallow. So I took a measurement of the wheelbase, and it measured about one and one eighth of an inch. And then when you look at the handle side, the handlebar is not too thick. It measures about five eighth of an inch, and this means there's more room for your stuff. So what I did is I transfer all the stuff that I packed in my Samsonite into Quince, and it had a little bit more room to spare. So I took this packed Quince suitcase for a spin on my rug, and it performed so much better than Samsonite. However, it was not perfect. There are a couple times the front wheels would get stuck and the back wheels would lift up. I had to kind of push it with my foot to make it roll again. I did get a little frustrated towards the end, where I ended up dragging it away. I also did the pickup test. It felt pretty balanced. I could see myself lifting it using the side handle to place it onto the overhead luggage compartment. So remember, I was talking about the top and the bottom half did not line up. So you can see it here. Even with the suitcase that's packed, the top and the bottom Half, they still don't sit flush against each other. There's still some movement. I don't love this because for those times you have to check the suitcase, the harsh condition that the suitcase will potentially go through, any movement could potentially weaken the zipper or zipper fabric, which will cause the suitcase to fail. So let's go to the next suitcase, the Level A Luminous Textured Carry-On 20-inch. So this suitcase comes in at $170 without tax. I got mine during an Amazon Lightning deal. For $136, you can totally get this suitcase on sale. So I would definitely wait. The first impression, taking out of the box, is that it rolls really nicely on the hardwood floor, and the telescopic handle feels very, very sturdy and smooth. I really love the way it felt with a minimal amount of flux. The suitcase is also made in China. On the website, it says width is 14.5, height is 21.5, and depth. Is 9.2, and compared to what I measured, is pretty much spot on. Minus the depth is 9.5, so it's a little bit deeper than what is said on the website. And in terms of weight, the website said 7.7 pounds, and when I weighed it, is 
7.83 pounds. The wheels are level eight branded, so I'm not sure who the OEM or original equipment manufacturer. So compared to the Hinomoto wheels, these ones feel less grippy and smoother. What I mean by that is when I was rolling across my rug, it didn't pick up as much of my dog hair as the Hinomoto wheels on Quince. The diameter of the wheel is 21 inches, so slightly bigger than the Quince. The wheel width is about 3 8 per wheel and the total is one and a half and the ground clearance is 1.6 so it's a little bit lower than the quince on the outside tsa lock is on the top of the suitcase and unlike quince the stitchings are not exposed so there is another plastic piping that covers the stitching and the enforcement panel at the spine of the suitcase which i really like so the piping prevents or minimize the likelihood of the stitch unraveling from rough handling in addition it has four feet on the side without the handle, which can help keep the suitcase clean when you stand up the suitcase horizontally. Okay, let's take a look at the inside and we'll start with the zipper again. The exterior and interior zippers are all YKK, but it doesn't zip as smoothly as Quince going around the corners. And this is because level eight has very pointy corners and the zippers like to glide across straight paths or more rounded corners. And because of the sharp corners, it's just doesn't zip as smoothly. Another thing that I'm concerned about is the corners may get dented if it absorbs a large amount of force. Like someone accidentally drops the suitcase on one of the corners. Reviews on Amazon showed exactly that. I'm not sure what the suitcase went through, but just seeing that photo made me a little bit nervous. When you open the suitcase, both sides are fully zippable and it has no compression strap or panel. So one zipper side is a piece of solid fabric and then the other side is mesh fabric. And the mesh side feels very soft and not as sturdy. When I was researching the suitcase, I found another review on Amazon that showed the edge of the mesh coming apart, which made me kind of nervous about the sturdiness of of the mesh side. It didn't come with any laundry bags or scuff polish blocks, which I actually don't really mind and will not impact my decision making. But it did come with a uh, dust bag, so that's nice. Let's take a look at the body. I wanna see what's under the lining. So because level A has a logo, that logo is screwed to the body of the suitcase and the screws are taped over. Also, there are screws for the four feet, even though these screws are pretty small, but they're still kind of like taking up some spaces. And the wheelbase of level eight suitcase is much deeper than Quince. It measured about one and three fourths of an inch and handlebar is also thicker than Quince. So it measured about one inch. So even though I love the wheel and I love the sturdiness of the telescopic handle, but the components that they use is bulkier and therefore it's gonna take up more space. That means less things you can bring. So when I packed the level eight with the same amount of stuff as Samsonite and Quince, it felt more stuffed like I predicted because the components that they use. But at the same time, I was also kind of surprised too. Level eight just felt bigger when you're holding it because of the shape and the weight. But on the other hand, level eight performed really well on the rug test. So transitioning from hardwood to rug wasn't as smooth as Quince, but once it's on the rug, it rolled really smoothly. I did not experience any wheels getting stuck or lifting up. So that felt really sturdy. And because the handlebar didn't flex, the whole thing just felt very, very sturdy. As for picking up the suitcase, it felt felt balanced but kind of heavy so I struggled a little with picking it up using the side handle but overall manageable. Okay, let's move on to the next one, which is the base carry-on roller. So I was not planning to buy this suitcase because the size and the weight, but because they had it at Nordstrom, which they have a pretty easy return policy. So I decided to give it a try. This suitcase comes in at $218 without tax. They do go on sale. So I would recommend to buy it from Nordstrom so you can take advantage of the sale they offer sometimes, as well as if you have Nordstrom credit card so you can get the points and you can get more discount through Rakuten. So if you're not familiar with Rakuten, I do wanted to hit this really quick. By the way, this is not sponsored by Rakuten or anybody because I'm so small. I just really love them and I wanted to make sure that you get all the discounts that you deserve. 
So what they do is that they offer cash back when you navigate to Nordstrom or any other e-commerce through their website or app. It's really easy to use. So you go to Rakuten, you type in the shop, and it will tell you how many percent they are giving back for a specific store. So I've been a member since 2013. This is a little embarrassing, but I have gotten almost $700 in rebate so far. And when I say rebate, they actually send you a check. If you haven't heard about Rakuten, I highly recommend you checking them out. I do have a referral code so you can get $30 when you sign up. So the first impression taking the suitcase out of the box is that it feels nice rolling on the hardwood floor. The telescopic handle feels somewhat sturdy and smooth but had a little bit of flex and it's not as smooth and sturdy as level A. The thing that I hate about this handle is the gel pads on the bottom. I know some people love this, but I hate it. It feels like it can get sweaty and gross really quick. So I think it's just personal preference if you like it or not, but I did not. It just feel like one of those stress ball that will get nasty really quickly. So anyway, the suitcase is made in China and the dimension on the website says the width is 15.7, height is 22.8, depth is 9.8. And the width, when I measured it, it's 15.6. The height is 20. 23 and then the depth is 10.5 what happened why is depth 10.5 versus 9.8 that's almost one inch difference so i'm not sure how they measure this and in terms of the weight it was pretty spot on on the website it says 8.36 i measured it 8.4 and the wheels are japanese hinomoto wheels measures that diameter of 24 inches the wheel width is about 3 8 per wheel and then total is 1.75 when the two wheels are together. And the ground clearance is 2.1. The TSA lock is on the side of the suitcase, which I like, as I mentioned before. And the stitching and the enforcement panel at the spine of the suitcase, they're covered by a plastic piping, which I also like. So this is something that's unique to base is the retractable back attached strap. In theory, you should be able to hold up to 15 pounds. It's kind of cool, but I much prefer my personal item having a trolley sleeve so that I can loop through the telescopic handle. Let's take a look at the inside. Let's start with the zippers again. All the zippers are YKK and it's very, very smooth. When you open up the suitcase, one side is fully zippable with solid fabric. It actually has like a plastic compartment so that you can put wet stuff in the plastic side, which is kind of cool. And then the other side has compression straps with compression panels. So the straps are sewn into the suitcase. So there are a few design choices that I really like. The first is when you open the compression panel as well as the zipper panel, both of them falls outward, which means you can have unobstructed access to the things in your suitcase. I thought that was kind of smart. This is the first suitcase that did that. It also came with one laundry bag, one shoe bag, and it didn't come up with a dust bag. Let's check out what's under the lining. The thing that was kind of surprising is is how bulky the backing of the retractable back attached strap. You can see it's actually taking up quite a bit of space. On the other hand, the wheelbase is pretty shallow. I think it may be the shallow so far. It measures about one inch, but the handlebar is thicker than Quince. It measures about one inch. So what I was really surprised to find is that the base had internal corner bumpers. I don't think they advertise it, but it's kind of cool. It makes it more sturdy in theory. So let's pack the suitcase. With the same amount of stuff, I definitely have more room. I mean, the suitcase is much bigger, so I expected to have room. But what I did not expect is how much space the retractable back attached strap took up. I had to reposition my wedge boots to fit around this bulky backing. I was not a big fan of it. And for the rug test, I was also surprised that it was not as smooth as level eight. I thought the reason Quince wasn't as smooth is because the size of the wheel. And these are Hinomoto wheels that are slightly larger, so it will make rolling a little bit easier. But as you can see, the front wheel got stuck a couple times when I was rolling. And as for picking up the suitcase, it felt pretty balanced, but it's just heavy. Let's move to the next one, Mono. Carry on plus. I was going to buy the Monos carry on regular because they didn't offer a free return. I bought one from Nordstrom, which they only had the carry on plus. So my thought process was that the Monos carry on and the carry on plus should have all the same components. And the only differences are the size and weight. If I like the Monos carry on plus, I would just buy a carry on size from Monos website.
$2,999. Although the retail price is $255 without tax for the carry-on, the Monos often has sales, so I definitely recommend you to wait for Black Friday or Cyber Monday to buy one. And for the carry-on plus, the retail price is $175 without tax. The suitcase rolled really nicely out of the box on the hardwood floor. The telescopic handle feels somewhat sturdy and smooth, but with some flux. It's about the same as base and not as sturdy as level 8. Also, unlike the other suitcases, the button for the telescopic handle is at the bottom. It had the most adjustment levels. I couldn't find where the suitcase is made. I'm going to guess it's probably China. So I still included dimension here just as a way to compare how the real measurements compare to the measurements that are on the website. So I do wanted to point out that these dimensions are still more compact and lighter than base. And base is being marketed as a standard carry-on versus for Monos, this is a carry-on plus. The wheels don't have OEM marking, but I read somewhere that they are using the Hinomoto wheels. So the wheel diameter is 1.9 inches, wheel width is 3 eighths per wheel and 1 and 5 eighths total. So the middle part that attached to the two wheels is a little bit wider, so the total is slightly wider than the others. And then the ground clearance is 1.6. The TSA lock is on the side of the suitcase and the stitching and the enforcement panel at the spine of the suitcase are covered by a plastic piping. So the zipper for the exterior suitcase is YKK and all the inside zippers I couldn't find marking but they're all pretty smooth so I didn't have any problems with it. When you open the carry-on one side is fully zippable with solid fabric and then the other side has compression straps with a compression panel. By the way this is the first suitcase that has compression straps that are screwed into place rather than sewn into place, which I like because this makes replacing the strap easier. It also came with a bunch of accessories and it has a dust bag. This is the first dust bag that's made from cotton-like material versus other ones. They're more like that plasticky feel dust bag. So let's take a peek under the lining again. You can see that the front does have screws for the logo and unlike other suitcase, the handlebars are angled, which measures about one and one eighth of inch thick. And then the wheelbase is about one and one fourth inch tall. So it's not too bulky. It kind of lands in the middle, but it's not the most compact ones. Because this is a plus, so I expect it to fit more. And as you can see, it had plenty of room for more. But what I was surprised about is that this is smaller than base in the external dimensions, but it's more spacious inside. And for the rug test, it was a little smoother than base, but not as smooth as level A in my opinion, which is kind of crazy because Monos put so much emphasis on their wheels. And also a lot of videos that I watched, they all praise how good the Monos wheels are. For my rug test, it just did not feel as smooth as level eight. And then the other thing that I was surprised is I did not like the telescoping handle button at the bottom. I kept accidentally hitting it with my fingers. I also thought I would like the ability to make more adjustments with the handle height, but it just made it retracting the handle more frustrating. As for picking it up, it felt pretty balanced and lighter than level eight and base. Okay, let's move on to the next one, July carry-on essentials. So there are two different July carry-ons. I picked the essential because it's lighter, the bumpers are hidden, and it doesn't come with battery. When I got this suitcase at the end of August, it was $255. By the way, this includes tax. If you're in the US, you just buy this for $255, which is really nice. But when I went back to the website, now it shows $275. So if you're buying one now, you're gonna be paying $20 more. The suitcase feels nice rolling on the hardwood floor when I first took it out from the box and the telescopic handle feels sturdy and smooth. I really love the way it felt with minimal amount of flux. It's kind of comparable to level eight. Initially, I thought the handle top felt a little big in my hand, but as I got used to it, I liked the firm grip I was able to get with the handle top. I also couldn't find where the suitcase is made. I assume it's China. So the dimension online for the suitcase are width 15, height 21.5, and then the depth is 8.5. When I measure it in person, the width is 15.3, the height is 22, and then the depth is 9. So it's slightly larger than what 
it said on the website. This one made me really sad. On the website, it says 6.6 .6 pounds. And when I weighed it, it was 7.72 pounds. I was so frustrated that it was one pound heavier than what was advertised. When it comes to the wheels, it didn't have any OEM marking either, but it's grippier than level 8, but less grippy than Hinomoto wheels. And the diameter is 2.1 inches. The wheel width is 3 eighths per wheel and total is 1 inch and 5 eighths. So it's similar to base. And the ground clearance is 1.4 inches. On the outside, the TSA lock is on the top of the suitcase and the stitching in the enforcement panel at the spine of the suitcase are covered by a plastic piping. On the inside, zippers are all YKK and very smooth. When you open the carry-on, one side is fully zippable with mesh and then the other side is this white shaped compression straps with a compression panel. They're also all screwed into place instead of sewn. So the mesh panel on the suitcase does feel a little bit more harder and durable. So hopefully it does not get ripped. When you open up the lining, you can see that there are no screws for the logo because the July logos are imprinted into the body of the suitcase. So I like about that. And the handlebars measure about seven eighths of an inch thick, which is on the thinner side. And I'm just so impressed how durable it feels being on the thinner side. The wheelbase is about one and one eighth of an inch tall, which is on the shallower side. And again, I'm just so impressed with the ground clearance being only 1.4 and it still has such a shallow wheelbase. And finally, as advertised, it has these internal plastic bumpers. So these, in theory, is supposed to help with the structure integrity of the suitcase, especially when you check it because it goes through a lot. So I was able to fit everything nicely with room for more, I was surprised by how spacious it was on the inside. So I took this stuffed suitcase for a rug test and it was as smooth as level 8 and it handled the transition from hardwood to rug better than level 8. I did not experience any wheels getting stuck or lifting up. The telescoping handle felt really sturdy and the handle top size and shape made it really easy to grip and push. And I actually really like the fact that there are only two height adjustments, which made it extending and retracting the handle very easy. As for the lift test, the top lift handle is on the outside of the suitcase. So when I picked it up, the bottom of the suitcase was leaning outward. I know I read a review that they mentioned it didn't feel as balanced. I actually disagree. I think this design is ingenious because the bottom is leaning outward. What it does is that it kind of gives you like a little boost when you have to pick up the suitcase and put it into the overhead bins because I'm really sure any help that I can get to help me put the suitcase up is a win for me. So I absolutely loved it. Okay, let's move to the second most expensive one, which is the Tumi 19 degree 21 inch carry on. Consultants were expected to travel four days a week for months at a time. To me, is pretty much the gold standards. I personally never had one because they were pretty expensive, but a lot of my colleagues had one. So these go for $750, but I was able to get this particular coral collar on sale for $600 without tax. The suitcase feels nice rolling on the hardwood floor out of the box, and the telescopic handle was very thin and was not as sturdy as level eight or July, but it felt really smooth. And because how thin it was, it definitely had more flux. So this suitcase is also made in China and the dimension on the website says 14 inch in width, 21.8 inch in height, and 9 inches in depth. When I measured it is 14.1 inches in width, 21.5 inches in height, 9.4 inches in depth. So pretty similar to what the website said. And the weight is 7.94 on the website and I measured it 7.94. So exactly spot on. It doesn't say the wheel OEM, but it looks and feels different from others. So perhaps they make their own wheels. The diameter is 21 inches. The wheel width is half inch per wheel and 1.5 inches total. And the ground clearance is about 1.5 inches. The TSA locks that's on the side of the suitcase and has a dedicated spot for a luggage tag. The stitching and the enforcement panel at the spine of the suitcase are covered by a plastic piece. And there's actually a one extra reinforcement piece 
on top of the plastic piping at the back. The side handle is on the right side instead of the left side for all the suitcases that I talked about so far. And when you look at the inside, the zippers are YKK, but the zippers that they use on To Me feels more robust and I can't believe this, but somehow it's smoother than all the other YKK zippers. When you open the carry-on, one side is fully zippable with a solid panel and the other side has this X-shaped compression straps, but it did not have any panel. So the straps are screwed into place. There are a couple of small pockets for adding your own battery, I think, or you can put like little things, trinkets into these pockets. There are just a lot going on with the suitcase. Like the Monos, you can actually access the back spine by unvelcroing this piece. I think it's for service access, but I'm not sure how helpful it is. It doesn't come with a laundry bag, but it comes with a, uh, I guess you call this a dust bag. It honestly looks like a trash bag to me. Although I don't really care about the dust bag, but for $750 suitcase, I was expecting a little bit more elegance instead of looking like a pile of trash. So when I open up the lining, the body of the suitcase is full of screws and attachments. And it would be really hard to service this if you need to replace wheel or something. And the handlebars are really substantial for how skinny and flexible it felt. It measured about one and one eighth inch thick. And the wheelbase was really thick too. It measured about one and seven eighth of an inch tall, so almost two inches. I was able to squeeze everything in, but the inside felt really cramped. There there's just a lot going on and I did not love this. Okay, so the good part about this suitcase, the rug test, it was so smooth. The wheels are absolutely amazing. On the other hand, the telescoping handle felt really flimsy. You can see how much the handle is flexing. It just didn't feel sturdy when I was pushing it. The side handle is on the right side. I found it really hard to use because I'm right-handed. I have to lift the suitcase up with my left hand and support with right, which is a lot harder. And that you can see I'm struggling here. But if you're left-handed, maybe you will love this. And finally, the most expensive suitcase that's on this list is the Remova Essential Small Cabin. So this suitcase comes in at $850 without tax. Remova really goes on sale. But if you wanted to get some kind of discount, I recommend using Rakuten. Like I mentioned earlier, I bought mine from Bloomingdale and I was able to get 10% rebate. So that's pretty substantial. The suitcase looks and feels expensive. It feels really nice rolling on the hardwood floor out of the box. The telescopic handle was very smooth and very sturdy. I did have an issue with how hard I had to press the button to extend and retract the telescopic handle. The suitcase is made in Canada and the dimensions are 15.8 in width, 21.7 in height, and the depth is 7.9 on the website and weighed about 8.2 pounds. And what I measured is width came out to be 15.3 inches, height 21.3, and depth is 8.1. I was pleasantly surprised by the weight only coming in at 7.5 pounds instead of 8.2, which I'm not mad at it. It doesn't say the wheel OEM, but they are significantly different looking from the other ones. The wheel diameter is two inches. The wheel width is half inch per wheel, total of 1.5 inches. And the ground clearance is about 1.4 inches. The outside TSA lock is on the side of the suitcase. The stitching is exposed, but the enforcement panel at the spine of the suitcase is secure secured with two plastic feet, which I thought it was kind of cool. And there are four additional feet on the side of the suitcase, which makes six total. Like to me, the side handle is also on the right side and the suitcase comes with shaped bumpers, but it is the same material as the rest of the outer shell. So I'm not sure if it's functional or just for aesthetics. And when you look at the inside, the zippers are YKK and like to me, somehow they just feel more robust and buttery, even though they're all YKK like other ones. They may have gotten the better YKK. When you open the carry-on, both sides have compression straps with compression panel and the compression straps are screwed into place. I initially worry about the Velcro teeth 
that could potentially ruin my clothes. But upon close examination, it turned out that the teeth is made from silicone, so your clothes would be safe. I thought that was just super thoughtful. It didn't come with a laundry bag, but it does come with a leather luggage tag, and it came with a really nice fabric dust bag. And when I say really nice, the fabric felt like silky sheets, but thicker. It was just very luxurious because both sides have compression straps that are screwed in. It was really difficult to open up the lining. Actually, one side lining had glue on it, so I couldn't really take a look at the inside. But I was able to manage to measure the wheelbase. As well as the handlebar. The handlebars are pretty thin. It measured about five eighths of an inch thick, and the wheelbase is the most shallow one, which three fourths of an inch tall. So even though the body of the suitcase is the smallest compared to all the other ones, because the components is taking up so little of the space. In the body of the suitcase, you can fit quite a bit. I was able to fit everything inside with a small amount of space left, actually. Although Remova was the most shallow in terms of depth, it just didn't feel cramped like to me. It didn't have these random compartments, random zipper areas. It's a lot more streamlined and just more space for you to put your stuff the way that you want it. And as for the rug test, it was the smoothest experience out of all the suitcases that I tested. It rolled with a little to no trouble and felt extremely stable. On the other hand, I was a little bit challenged with the telescoping handle. It was really hard to extend when it was fully packed, and this was actually something that I read on one of the reviews as well. Like July, the top handle is on the outside, so when you lift. The suitcase using the top handle, the bottom leans outwards, so that momentum allow you to be able to pick up the suitcase and put it into the overhead compartment easier, which I absolutely love. It's so ingenious. I don't know why other companies haven't thought about this. And like to me, the side handle is on the right. I just ended up not using it. So I think it's great for someone who's left-handed. Okay, so that was all the suitcases. So this video took me about three months to make, from the point of purchase to review to filming to edit. This is definitely one of the biggest projects that I worked on on my YouTube channel. It would totally make my day if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. It's time to crown the winner. So I have summarized all seven of the suitcases as well as my Sims Knight, the one that I've been using in this spreadsheet. You can find the model names as well as URL that you can make purchase, the color that I bought it for, the retail price, website information on width, height, depth, as well as weight versus what I have measured. I also have measured the wheel diameter, the wheel width, as well as ground clearance. Additionally, I have captured where it's made, if the compression strap is sewn or screwed in. For the carpet rolling test, what I did is that I rank from one to eight. One is the best wheel experience that I have, and then eight is the worst. Number one, no surprise, it was Remova, and number two was Tumi, and number three, it's a tie between July and Level Eight, and number five is Monos. Number six is a tie between Base and Quince. And in terms of the handle test, so this is how sturdy the handle is. Basically, it has three categories. Okay, categories are the ones that. Feels pretty sturdy. It's okay. Good are the ones that are better than okay, and then excellent are the ones that have felt really sturdy. The two that are okay are Quince and Tumi. Tumi was really disappointing when it comes to handle. It was just so skinny and it was really wobbly. And the three good handles are Base, Monos, and Remova. The challenge with the Remova handle is that it was hard to pull up and down, but other than that, it felt really sturdy. And the problem with Base that I had was the squishy gel pad that I did not like. The challenge with Monos was there's so many adjustment levels, and the button was on the bottom, which made it really difficult for me to use. The two that are excellent were Level Eight and July. Both of these had the buttons on top, and if Felt really, really sturdy, very high quality. Last but not least, the fit. So I just add a volume column that allows us to be able to kind of compare. Simsonite was my baseline. You can see that the volume is about three thousand one hundred and ten cubic inch. Quince is actually slightly smaller in terms of the volume, but it fit more. And the reason is because the design of the suitcase allowed more space, which I was very, very impressed. Level eight, on the other hand, the volume wise, just a slightly smaller, but but the fit felt significantly smaller. I definitely have to cramp 
stuff in. It didn't feel like there's a lot of room. And the challenge with level A is actually 1.3 pounds more than my baseline. So you're getting a smaller suitcase in volume, heavier in weight, and it fits smaller. When it comes to base and monos, I actually did not include them in the fit portion of the comparison. The reason is because these two are sized as carry on plus, even though base does not say carry on plus, but you can see it here in comparison to monos. By the way, I do not recommend buying a base. I recommend buying monos. It is lighter weight, smaller in volume, and actually fit more than base and performed better on the carpet rolling test. So I highly recommend buying monos if you're thinking about buying base. And when you look at July, the volume is smaller than the Simpsonite and actually fits significantly more. I'm just super impressed with the July quality as well as the functionality of it. And when you look at Tumi, it is smaller in volume and it's smaller in fit. And look how heavy it is, 7.94 pounds for amount of the space, the weight and the cost. Yeah, I'm not sure, but it did have very, very smooth rolling experience. Finally, Remova. This is by far the smallest coming in at 2,640 cubic inches. Surprisingly, it fits slightly more than the baseline. I definitely appreciate the remove of design for how compact it is. It is heavier and it's more expensive, but Remova is really creative in terms of how they use the space and so that you can fit more. So yeah, I'm super impressed by Remova's fit. So looking at all the factors, the cost, the size, the weight, how it's made, carpet test, handle test, and fit, I definitely crown July as the winner. It rolls really smooth, not as smooth as Tumi and Remova. For less than half the price, you're still getting a really great wheel experience. The handle felt really sturdy, better than Tumi and Remova, and it fits more than Tumi and Remova. Although July is the winner, I'm not planning to keep July. The reason is because of the weight and size. On their website, they said 6.6 pounds, but in real life is 7.72 pounds. I know this is only about one pound difference, but every pound adds up. And the size of the suitcase is also slightly larger than what it says on the website. Because I will be doing quite a bit of international travels, especially in Europe, I wanted to have a suitcase that's as close to the standard 14 times 22 times 9. So I am planning to get the July light carry-on. So I will compare that to the carry-on essential. So maybe that will be the winner? Stay tuned. And if you're looking for a more budget option, I actually recommend Quince over level eight. The reason is because some of the flaws that I mentioned about Quince, such as the top and the bottom are not flush to each other and the exposed stitching, I think those can be addressed by putting a suitcase cover over the suitcase if you wanted to check as well as stuffing the suitcase to the brim so that you can minimize the amount of the movement. Although I ranked Quince lower in terms of the carpet test as well as the handle test, but it is still pretty good in comparison to the risk with level eight, such as the corner getting damaged because you can't really protect that with a suitcase cover. And then also I'm really concerned with the mesh panel ripping versus Quince does have the nice compression panel and the mesh panel feels a little bit more sturdy. So I would recommend Quince over level eight for an option that's under $200. That's it. This video has been long enough and I think I said everything that I wanted to say. All right, see you next time. Bye.